Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brianna. This is Coffee Books and Bullet Journals and today I'm going to be giving you some recommendations for some summer beachy reads. Alright, so it's August. <laughs> which means like we're coming up to the end of summer, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, like where has this year gone? Ne next month is fall, guys. Next month is fall. Michael's has Christmas stuff out. I figured let's hold on to summer a few weeks longer. There are still a few weeks before school starts back up and uh, you know, the weather starts cooling down, it's still hot, there is still time to go to the pool, to the lake, to the beach, wherever you are in the world. And, you know, since it's the end of summer, I thought, well, maybe you're running out of books. Uh, so I'm gonna give you some recommendations. I have a ton here. At first, when I thought about doing this video, I was like, I don't know that I have that many, like, summer beachy reads. And I pulled 18 books out. So I do have a lot. We're going to talk about them and we're going to do it pretty quickly. I put them into three categories because here is what I like to read in the summer. So either the light and fluffy contemporaries that are like, you know, the typical beach read, whether that be the cute YA contemporaries or the steamy romance. I have both categories of that. And then on the complete flip side of that, I like to read thrillers in the summer, which is weird, I know. Um, but I like the, uh, you know, secluded on a, you know, in a, you know, trapped into a location or, you know, haunted house, whatever. So we're gonna start with the YA contemporaries and go from there. The first one I have is Love from A to Z by S.K. Ali. I read this last year during the summer and really, really enjoyed it. This is a really cute YA romance uh, between these two characters that meet on a plane and end up being at like the same school, something like that, same camp. Uh, it's really, really cute. It does deal with some very serious issues um, with one of the characters having a chronic illness and just like kind of navigating that as well as a new relationship very sweet, very heartwarming. Uh, I loved it. I give it five stars. Two books that kind of deal with uh, religion and coming of age and uh, finding yourself. Uh, the first one is Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. This is about a boy who goes to a Catholic school who is an atheist. This was a really, really good commentary on the youth and religion um, and how sometimes like forcing religion upon high schoolers is maybe not the greatest idea. I have an entire reading vlog for this that I will link up in the cards above uh, and it was a really interesting experience reading this one as well. She also has let's call it a doomsday which is um, a like it, it deals with the LDS faith a little bit not as much um, but that one was really good as well. And then, of course, we have Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This one also deals with the LDS faith, uh, as well as some LGBT issues. So this is about Sebastian and Tanner, and I think it's Tanner, yeah. <laughs> I get the boys mixed up sometimes, but Tanner uh, moved from California to uh, Provo, Utah, which is like the Mormon Mecca. And this is about him having to go back into the closet as a bisexual boy, but then kind of falling in love with the teacher's assistant who happens to be the bishop's son. So really, really cute and heartwarming book, and I love it a lot. Another one that I have a dedicated reading vlog for, and that is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. I read this way back in January, I think. Uh, and this was really, really cute. This is about two teenagers, Pepper and Jack. Yep, that's their names. And they are in a feud over a grilled cheese recipe that their parents, um, they, their parents both own restaurants and they're in this feud, this Twitter feud over a grilled cheese recipe. And um, they don't know that they are. They don't know the, the person behind the, the tweet uh, because in real life, they're actually kind of friends. So really, really cute really cool um very good concept and i mean super cheesy super corny but i loved it and she actually has a new book coming out i think next january and uh, i'm really excited to read that one as well 
And then, of course, a staple is Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albert Halley. This is another kind of LGBT coming of age, coming out story. Uh, this is a really, really cute read. And it's, I mean, it's been a couple of years since I've read it. I read it back when, like, it was really hyped up and big. Uh, but, I mean, there's a Netflix show about it. I think there's like two now at this point. Um, so this is one, especially if you're not a big reader, but you've been watching some of those Netflix rom com -y shows, this might be a book for you. Lastly, in the YA contemporary, this one has a little bit more of a fabulous feel to it if you are kind of aching for that fantasy. I'm not. I mean, I read a whole bunch of fantasy last month, if you saw by my wrap up, and it's just like, I don't know if it's that that's put me out, or it's just the fact that it's so hot. I just can't focus on like a huge fantasy novel right now. Um, but this has just like that little sprinkling of it. And that is Everything All at Once by Katrina Leno. Um, actually, a lot of Katrina Leno's books would be really good for this. Um, this is just the one I have physically. <laughs> This is, it has a little bit of a deeper, um, sadder undertone to it. Um, this girl's aunt, who she's very close to, passes away and has sent her all of these clues to go on these adventures and, and do things that are outside of her comfort zone. So it was a really cute read. I read it for the Reading Rush last year, so I did read it in the summer, and uh, it, was, it was a good book. Moving on to my kind of adult steamier romances. Um, I'm, I've talked about a lot of these recently, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them. Uh, the first ones up are Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Like, it would it be a recommendations list without these books on it? Uh, this is about two sisters, so they each get their own book. And then there's one more coming out next year with a third sister. This is about Chloe, who does have a chronic illness, so she's in a lot of pain a lot of the time. Um, and she has this, like, not life-threatening accident, but, like, she comes to the realization that, like, she's not living her life to the fullest. So she makes this list and she wants to check off this list and, and, you know, things like, you know, having meaningless sex and doing something bad and, you know, traveling the world with only um, carry-on luggage. All these big things. And then she meets Red, who is like the property manager of her apartment building. Uh, and there is like a relationship that starts there and it's just the cutest thing ever. Talia Hibbert can write some cinnamon rolls because both Chloe and Red are super cinnamon rolls and Zaff in Take a Hint Danny Brown is like the cinnamoniest of all cinnamon rolls and I love him so much. Um, but this is about uh, Danny who is Chloe's, I can't remember if she's an older or younger sister, but regardless. Um, <laughs> And she is a PhD student and, you know, teaches at um, the college. And then Zaf is the security guard at this um, college. And he ends up rescuing her from a, like, a stuck elevator during a fire drill. And it's caught on camera. And then there's, like, fake dating element. And it's just, it's so great. Uh, Danny is a black bisexual witch with pink hair. She is the greatest character of all time. Anyway, I've talked a lot about these two books in particular in past videos, so um, check those out. I have a whole live show about Chloe Brown, and I'll link up in the cards if you would like to watch it. Anyway, moving on. I don't know if it's, well, it's, I don't think it's because of COVID and the fact that we don't have sports, um, because it was really before that, but it's definitely heightened uh, that my love of sports romances. So first up we have Alexa Martin's books Intercepted, Fumbled, and her uh, third one is Blitzed. I don't have a physical copy of that one. And then she has a new one coming out called Snapped. I will literally sell my soul for an arc of that book. <laughs> Just, you know, FYI, um, if anyone at Berkeley is watching. Um, but this is a series of books about the Denver Mustangs, which is the professional football team, and um, the players and uh, then like women that are involved with it. So good, so steamy, but there's a lot of like actual sports talk in it, which is like, which just makes me happy <laughs> because I, I don't know, I love, especially football. Intercepted is about like the new quarterback of the team, but she was dating the old quarterback and then he cheated on her. Um, and this one, oh my gosh, Gavin is so great. The whole series just, Fantastic. Read them. Pick them up. But kind of on that same line, Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey is also like 
not exactly a sports romance, but Travis is a retired baseball player and he has um like there's, so there's a, he's trying to get like a sports commentator job and so there's a little bit of sports talk in it not quite as much but this is a really cute romance too about this girl who's never taken seriously by her family she's like her job is literally to be a clown like a party at parties and stuff like that and so it's just a really cute story about like her kind of growing up and growing into herself um, with the help of Travis it's also a fake dating as well speaking of fake dating we have a couple of Christina Lauren books that uh, that I, I haven't talked about in a little while. We have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is probably the last like really good book that I read by them. Uh, after that, meh. Um, but this one was really good, and this is a it's a fake dating. Uh, it's about the. Um, this girl who's at her sister's wedding um her i think she's their twins i think so i think they're twins uh and everyone at her sister's wedding gets sick from the seafood buffet uh except for her because she's she's a vegetarian or something like that so she didn't eat the seafood and then the groom's brother who just doesn't like buffets so also didn't eat the food um and so they end up having to take the honeymoon for the bride and groom um but they have to pretend like they're married the whole time otherwise they have to end up paying for it because it was like a contest that the sister had won and that's why they had to go with Ben. it's really really fun it's a great summer read they're in hawaii so i mean it, this is the epitome of a beach read and then the other christina lauren book that i haven't talked about a lot um, but that is my favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. This is kind of a friends to lovers, but also fake dating-ish. Uh, and this is about this group of friends who decided that they are going to like this black tie affair. They all decided they wanted dates for it. Um, so they all came up with like doing this basically Tinder app kind of thing. Uh, but the two friends actually get matched together but the girl had used a different name and a picture that was like kind of like hid most of her face so he couldn't tell it was her um so he thinks that he's like talking to another person it's a it's a whole thing uh but they kind of fall in love over these text messages and these ims that they're that we go back and forth and talking um it was really interesting i listened to this on audiobook and it was a really quick read but it was kind of fun. It was a lot of fun. Now for your dark and twisted side of your brain uh, that just wants all of the mystery and suspense. The first one I have is Sadie by Courtney Summers. Read this last year, last summer, I think. FYI, listen to it on audiobook. It's a great way to like, listen to it while you're going on a hike or tanning on the at the pool, whatever. Um, <laughs> But it has a podcast element to it, so the audiobook is fantastic. So this is about a girl who is convinced that her sister was kidnapped, even though she, like everyone else just kind of thinks that she ran away. And it is, um, it's this, it's super mysterious and spooky, and it goes back and forth from the real time, like trying to search for her sister and the podcast, and which is like happens much later really really good kept me on the edge of my seat and it's really short and the audiobook is not that long a book that I read a couple of months ago and that is The Guest List by Lucy Foley this is about a group of people that uh, are at this wedding on this secluded island in Ireland I think uh, and at the very beginning you find out that someone dies you don't know who and you literally don't know who until the very last page you don't know who died and you don't know who did it uh it's really really cool it takes place from i think it's how many perspectives i want to say it's like six or seven perspectives but i could be wrong there uh but it's multiple perspectives and you're seeing different sides of the story as it all comes together um basically from like the 24 hours prior to the wedding to the point that you find out who had died um and it was really, really, really interesting. The thing with PO, like multiple POVs is you definitely have some that are stronger than others. So that definitely like plays a part in it. But for fans of like Agatha Christie, this will be right up your alley. Now this is probably the only Ruth Ware book that I 
really, really enjoyed. I've, I haven't read The Turn of the Key yet, so I can't really say that quite yet. Um, but The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware was fantastic. I read this a couple of years ago, uh, gave it five stars. I don't read a ton of thrillers, but this one had me on the edge of my seat, and I didn't... I'm trying to remember if I guessed the plot or not. I don't think I did, especially since this was like early on in my booktube days. Uh, but this is about a woman who gets a um, a letter and this woman had been like really down on her luck, was about to lose her apartment, was about to lose like a lot because they she owed money that she didn't have. And she got this letter with her name on it uh, from uh, someone she had never met before, didn't know, um, saying that this family member had died and that she was in the will uh, and she was going to be receiving some money and so she decided to play along she was like clearly this is meant for somebody else this wasn't meant for me but I'm really down on my luck and I need some money so we're gonna play along uh, and so it's really really interesting mystery of you know what happened is she actually the person that they were looking for uh, fantastic definitely one to check out and then lastly is probably one of my favorite thriller authors and that is Riley Sager so we have Lock Every Door by Riley Sager and then my new favorite Home Before Dark which is his newest novel um, both of these are super spooky super scary um, well like for a chicken baby like me they are <laughs> uh, FYI this one does have snakes in it like a whole scene of snakes it's it was a little bit jarring but still a fantastic book um, so lock every door is about a woman who decides she like takes looks at this advertisement for a basically a house sitter um, to stay at this apartment and they would get paid to stay at the apartment but there were a whole bunch of rules like you couldn't let other people into your place you couldn't not stay at the apartment you couldn't um, couldn't have like couldn't talk to the other people in the apartment it was a weird thing but she was getting paid like four thousand dollars a month so she's like yeah let's do it I don't care <laughs> um, and things are not as it seems obviously uh, the apartment's a little little spooky um, it has a very gothic feel to it and this was just very atmospheric and really really well done there are some criticisms that this is very reminiscent to I can't remember which horror film but it's like an older classic horror film um, but I don't watch horror films like at all I can't, can't I can do like thriller horror books sort of but not film so I don't know and I really enjoyed this because I didn't know it was copying or emulating anything then we have home before dark which definitely emulates a little bit of the classic Stephen King especially like the shining and pet cemetery I kind of liked those um, call outs to that I thought it was a really nice tribute to like some classic King but this is about a woman who inherits this house that her father um, had purchased and her father had written this true story um, about the house and about all these scary things and and ghosts and things like that that had happened in the house um, and it changed her life she was only five when it happened and she doesn't remember anything that happened so as an adult she's trying to come back she goes back to the house and basically is trying to prove her dad wrong but then like we don't know like the thing mysterious things are happening uh, at the house so we don't know if it's this paranormal or if it's there's a logical explanation this was really good this goes back and forth from the uh, like chapters of the actual book her dad wrote um, and the real life 20 years later her being back at the house this I read this whole book in less than 24 hours guys it was so good um, and I mean everyone on booktube is talking about it right now so there is that but definitely definitely recommend this all right guys that is all that i have for you today let me know down in the comments below what you would most like to take to the beach or the lake or a pool uh what book do you like to read on a hot summer day if you are new here and you have not yet subscribed there's a little red button that you can do so down below the video and all the other links to my social media will be in the description below if you would like to be my friend on any other platform thank you all for watching and i will see you next time bye this heartbeat faster